Roman pizza is light, it's airy, it's fluffy, and it's crispy. And until recently, you couldn't get this style of Roman pan pizza outside of Rome. But lucky for us, we so happen to be in the only city in the United States with access to it. Gabriele Banchi opened up Pizzerium in Rome back in the early 2000s and flipped the pizza game on its head. Right? That's a thing, right? It's not on its butt, it's on its head. Right, okay, got it. So that style, his exact style, is the one that we're gonna chase after today. All right, so Roman pizza dough. This is a wet dough, and when I say wet, I mean it's super high hydration, which means there's almost as much water in the dough as there is flour. It's kind of a pain in the ass to work with, but we're gonna be fine, we're gonna, we're gonna be all right. I'm using a stand mixer to make this dough today because it's just a lot easier. You can do this by hand, but if you have one of these, I highly recommend using it. All right, we got some cold H2O. Instant yeast, bread flour, and this stuff here. This is non-diastatic malt powder. It's got a crazy smell. I know that probably sounds fancy and scary, but it's really not, right? This is just barley powder, and what it's gonna do is add a lot of color to our dough. Not to be confused with diastatic malt powder, which actually does change and manipulate the dough itself. So we're gonna pop some of that in. It's 3% by weight of flour. All right, we're gonna pop this boy right in here. Something a little different, we're gonna use the paddle attachment. It's gonna help incorporate everything a lot better than the dough hook for now. We're gonna use this later, but reach for this guy. Pop her in. All right, so right about at this, whoa, whoops. <laughs> All right, so right about at this stage, we're gonna cut it and we're gonna let it rest in auto lease for 20 minutes. While that's resting, let's have a little conversation, you and I. During my research for this video, I went to Banchi. Look at that little cute guy. One of the two locations here in Chicago. The place is super nice. I love the decor. They just have these pizzas lined up in a row so beautifully. It feels like, you know, you're walking into some like European restaurant or something, which makes sense because it's from Rome. Roman pizza is unique because it's not quite as thick as Detroit or Sicilian style, but it's also, you know, not nearly as thin as New York or say like a tavern style. It sits somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. The way they run the restaurant is pretty unique. They ask you what kind of pizza you want, then they cut it for you with scissors, and then they weigh it, and they charge you based off that weight, which is actually kind of a genius idea for food cost. What's interesting about the way they do things is that they kind of have all of these pizzas cooked to about, I don't know, like 80 to 90% laid out for display, and then when you order them, like I said, they cut you off a piece, and then they actually put it in a smaller oven to crisp it up and reheat it for you. If they cooked the pizza fully, it would kind of probably be too hard and maybe burn in that oven. It's just a nice little tip when you're thinking about these and if you're doing them for a party, you know, you can make a bunch of these pizzas, let them sit out for a bit, and then when your guests come over, you can just pop them in the oven and boom, pizza time. Pizza party. No party like a pizza party. Let's get back to the dough. Okay, I forgot to mention this, but in the written recipe, it's there. We divided our water up, right? We added most of it in when we auto leased the dough, and this is the remaining water. What we're gonna do now is add our kosher salt into this water and dissolve it up. That's just gonna make sure that the salt disperses more evenly. Now we're gonna slowly drizzle this in with the paddle attachment on, on a low speed. If you go too fast, you're gonna slop yourself in the face with the water. And once it gets pretty sloppy and wet in there, about halfway through, I'm gonna wait and let that dough take in all that water. It's gonna drink it up. You can also intermittently increase the speed to speed this process up too. All right, I'm gonna turn the speed low again and finish off with the rest of our water. All right, great, the water looks worked in. We're gonna turn that back to low speed and add in our olive oil. Again, slowly drizzling it in, evenly incorporating that oil. All of our olive oil is in. At this point, we can increase the speed and really rip it at this stage. I'm gonna pop it to six out of 10. So once the dough looks like it's fully incorporated like this, we're gonna switch things up. We're gonna switch the paddle for our dough hook and continue the process. All right, so wet hands just makes it a little easier to work with the dough. Dough hook on. Again, we can just start whipping this pretty fast here. And we're gonna continue this motion until the dough pulls away from the sidewalls of the bowl. Oh, you gotta really make sure she doesn't run away on you. Woo, easy. Okay, see how it's separated from the sidewalls of the bowl? That is wonderful, that's good. It's gonna continue to develop gluten as it chills during our next step. Pew. So once your dough's mixed, pop it in a container, then let it chill in the fridge overnight for 24 hours. 
At Banchi, they have a 72 hour, I believe, cycle. We're gonna do a 24 hour cycle and get great results, trust me. So, like I said, this is our mixed dough that has rested for 24 hours. It's kind of important here that you use a container like this. This is actually a tip that our boy, pizza master, Chef Leo, taught me, right? He basically told me to go out and get these uh, rectangular Ziploc containers. But this actually just helps to pre-shape things, which is kind of important because look, it's already kind of in the shape that we want it to be. If you got them, use them. All right, here I just got some semolina flour. You can be very liberal with this flour. You know, you don't have to overwork this dough, just kind of let it plop out of its container. This part is uh, kind of like a pre-shape. It's gonna make sure that this dough, it's gonna be nice and open and beautiful when you bake it off. The crumb's gonna be open. I'm gonna basically just kind of take every little piece here, bunch them up into a ball like this, squeeze, and then I'm gonna fold it over itself. We're gonna squeeze again. I'm gonna turn it, fold it once more, and look at that, we're just, we're just trapping air in this. And it's such a wet dough that it's even with all this flour on it, super easy to seal. And we're just gonna pop that back in our tray. Now we're just gonna cover this up and let it rest at room temperature for three to four hours. And that just depends on the temperature of your room. A hotter room means a faster rise. By the time we get back to this thing, it should be risen all the way to near the top or at the top of the container. So this is the tray that we're gonna be using today. This is the same tray that I use for my Sicilian. It is a Lloyd pan. I'll have a link for you below uh, to check these out if you want them. Sure, you certainly can use like a regular sheet tray. Just make sure that it's steel and it's not aluminum because we want this thing to kind of charge with some heat here and to be a little sturdier. Prepping the tray is super simple, just a little bit of olive oil. You do not need a lot of olive oil. Nice little brush here, and you're just gonna paint the olive oil into the tray. Let your inner Picasso flourish. Picasso's Italian, right? Can we get an art check on that? Is Picasso Italian? Spanish. Really? Yep. Oh, why are there so many amazing Renaissance artists that I just can't think of? Not a Renaissance artist. Cool, man. <laughs> Cool, art history guy over here. Beautiful. And that is all you need to do to prep your pans. So we can set these aside and get to work and get to shaping. Ooh, look how gassy that is. I got a dough ready for us that I took out about four hours ago. It's been chilling. I mean, just look at that. That is bubble action to the max. We pre-shaped, now it's time to actually shape. So we're gonna take this, plop it onto our liberally floured surface. It should just come right out. Look at that thing, that is nice. And look at that, we kind of already have damn near the shape of a rectangle. So again, liberal with the semolina flour all over the top. And we're gonna start coming around the sides here with our fingers. You're basically playing the dough piano here. Now, it's okay, we kind of want some, like maybe a thinner crust around the rim. Notice how I'm kind of keeping this more bulbous. We're gonna come in here and lightly press that down. It should kind of have like a hump in it, almost like a turtle shell. But look at that, look at that. Gassy, that's what we want. That means it's gonna blow up all nice. Some people flip this around, give it crimps on the other side. I found that overworking it, playing with it too much can stretch it out and it's just kind of a pain. So I like to do it once like this. We have our prepped pans and I'm gonna do my best here to get it in the pan without disrupting it too much. This is kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, get a couple reps in, you'll be fine. Plop it right in there. And from here, you can stretch it into place. Very easy to work with, it's rested and loose. The goal of getting it in the pan is to not degas it too much, because we want this thing to have a nice open crumb. And boom. Now the beautiful thing about this pizza is we're done. You know, with the Detroit, with the Sicilian, with the grandma, you might let this rest and proof and rise in the pan. With Roman style, we don't gotta do that. This is ready to go in the oven immediately. Okay, so there are two ways you can do this. So I made two pizzas. There's sauced and then there's unsauced. Let's start with the sauced. So the reason I wanted to separate this out is because when you add stuff on top of dough before it goes into the oven, naturally it will weigh the dough down, whether you're talking about ingredients or sauce. That's fine. The beautiful thing about this style of pizza is there's no one way to do it. I think it's really cool because it kind of, you know, showcases Gabriele's sort of like background as a cook. You just kind of get it done depending on what's on the pizza and what you're going for. For this one, we're gonna go halvesies. I'm gonna do half one thing, half another thing. There's gonna be stuff on the pizza before we bake it the first time. I'm gonna basically try to find that halfway point. And we're just gonna kind of like lightly sauce this guy. Pop that all over edge to edge. Kind of being a little gentle here so we don't crush those air bubbles that we worked hard preserving. This next one, we're gonna sauce with just olive oil, fresh rosemary here. And then just kind of tear that over the pizza like this. And then these. So these are just potatoes that I went ahead and skinned and sliced. I dried some off and you can see that they kind of curl when you put them in that water and they look all beautiful. And when those cook, they're, gonna, they're just gonna look beautiful and look really nice. Fun little trick you can do. We're just gonna layer on these potatoes, kind of willy-nilly. <laughs> 
Not really doing this for the rhyme or reason. And this is kind of a lesson in adding your ingredients based on their cook time. That's gonna vary depending on what you put on your pizza. This is basically just like an example for you to kind of go by and look at and maybe inspire you. Pop a little salt on top of that. This goes into the oven, which I preheated for the past hour at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Check it out. For this, it's important that we have our grates in the middle of the oven. And I have a pizza steel here. If you have a pizza stone, that works as well. I'm gonna pop this on. Close her up, and that's gonna be about five to six minutes, and then we're gonna take it out. All right, look at that, look at that. That's what we want. Airy and gorgeous, soft bubbles. All right, well that's resting. We're gonna pop this naked boy in for about 10 to 12 minutes, and um, it's gonna be par-baked, and we'll get to this one when it's ready. For this red half, I'm gonna pop down some ricotta. This is just a nice soft cheese here. We're gonna dollop this all over and come back and smear it around. So it's hot, so it is a little easier to spread, which is nice. We got some beautiful, beautiful anchovies from Italy. Look at that, we got one to spare. Last thing, just a little pinch of oregano. Now let's get going on the potato side. This is a fun one. This is burrata. You've probably seen it before, it's very popular now. It's essentially a very creamy, rich cheese. Check it out, look at the inside. That's where the party's at. We're living that curd life. Got a lot of different colors working here, which is nice. And I used about half of that burrata. This is Induya sausage. It's basically a spreadable salami type situation. It stains the hell out of your hands, so you might wanna wear gloves, but I'm just gonna pinch off little dime-sized pieces. And again, just kind of disperse them all over the pizza and just make it look nice. That's kind of your rule of thumb here. Don't worry about exactly how much you're adding. This is your pizza. Have fun with it. All right, let's check this thing out. Whoo! Yes! Perfect. All right, I want to talk to you guys about this. Check this out right here. Look at this. That huge bubble there, it's kind of starting to get hard. So I'm going to go ahead and take a knife, poke some air holes in here. If not, this thing can get very hard. Push it down. The bread has risen, so I'm not too worried about, you know, crushing the rise. That's out, this is going in. This only needs about two to like three more minutes in the oven. We just want that burrata to kind of warm and melt a little bit for that sausage to crisp. And remember, two to three minutes, what does that mean? Maybe five minutes, I don't know. We're just gonna check on it. I'm actually gonna set a timer and we'll be right back. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Pretty. All right, cool, looking glorious. We're gonna finish this off later. Let's get working on the other guy. So again, with the burrata, leak that all over the pizza. The fun part about burrata is tearing the, like, the shell, the mozzarella shell that it comes in. Now all we gotta do is pop this in the oven for a little longer till that cheese melts and we're gonna finish it off. That's all we're doing today. Stick around because uh, there's gonna be some fun toppings on these guys. Stick around, see, stick around. Same. Is that what they say on the news? Same. This just in, same. Three minutes, we'll watch it. There's a lot of intuitive cooking with the style if you can't figure out by now. It depends on what you put on it, it depends what you're going for. Um, I like to work at 500 degrees. I like to keep that steel in the middle of the oven and just kind of you know rotate and keep the pizza in for different amount of times depending on what's on the pizza. Remember that sauce versus unsauce thing we talked about. All right, burrata's nice and melted on. Looking good. And we have a little bit of poolage here, which is fine because the bread itself is so, how do you say, dry because we, uh, we par-baked it. But you can always take a little napkin here or a paper towel. Just kind of dab off that moisture. It'll make your pizza last a little longer. All right, so in that process, you just determine whether you want to sauce or not sauce your pizza, how long you need to cook them for. And now we're just gonna finish them. So I have some lemon zest here. I'm just going to zest this lemon. Just kind of drop that lemon zest all over our anchovies, kind of brighten that up. So you got the fresh zingy tomato sauce, that creamy white cheese, the herbaceousness from the oregano, acid from the lemon zest, and that briny fish. So balanced and fun, you know? We like to keep it balanced and fun on the channel. All right, for this side here, for a potato, and do your side. I'm just gonna take some some of these nice small basil leaves. Pretty. I think all these pizzas could probably take some olive oil. It is Italian food after all. All right, last but certainly not least, the mortadella. It's essentially Italian bologna. That's gonna piss a lot of people off. And this one actually has the pistachio in it too, which I really think is uh, just a fantastic thing. I like to pinch them like a little, kind of like a little dress like that and just kind of lay them while maintaining their height. We're just gonna pop that on, lay it one by one by one. 
to finish off, I got a little more of that burrata. I've decided I want to put it on. I'm just going to squeeze some of these pinches in our crevasses here from our mortadella mountains that we have going on. We're gonna go mortadella sesame. This is a banchi thing I saw. So we're gonna pop our sesame seeds on. I don't think they do this at banchi, but I love toasted sesame oil. I cook up with it a lot. So we're gonna pop that on to embellish those sesame flavors. This is very strong, you don't need a lot of it. There you have it, Roman pizza, three ways. So like I said in the spots, they use scissors and they cut pieces off of this pizza. So that's what we're gonna do. Beautiful, look how open that is. It's got a nice crisp bottom, but here's the thing. It's a little pale, right? We're gonna fix that by putting it in the oven and reheating it. Uh, yeah. Cool. So you remember how pale our pizza was before we re-crisped it? And now look at that bad boy, come on. That is crisp. That is fluffy. Like my little hand drawing, yeah, I did that myself. It's pretty accurate. Come on, come on. I'm the on the modern day Italian Picasso, as they say. All right, so this is just some stuff that I got at Banchi. Pretty interesting here. They give them to you in slices like this, but then you can actually have them cut them up into smaller pieces. So they're almost like I don't know, little canapes, little tapas. I'm gonna do a classic roan. It's pretty good. Not as open. They probably, actually I know for a fact, they built this whole pizza and put it in so it wasn't able to rise as much. Still really tasty though, that crispiness and that fluffiness. I think we should try ours now. Mortadel Barada. This is the one that we allowed to open fully. Check this out. Mm, that's a winner. Wow. The banchi, delicious. A little less risen than ours. Of course, this all depends. Like, when I was watching videos of Gabriella, he was also talking about, you know, how they use generally three types of flowers. You know, the type of yeast might vary. I would imagine the flour might vary. The cooks might vary. So you get different pizzas depending on which day you go there. So they are gonna vary a little bit in flavor and texture and everything above. The cool part is about this whole thing is that you now do not have to go to Rome, even come here to Chicago to try this because you can make Roman pizza at home now. I, I don't know if there's another style of pizza that makes me sort of feel more like Hilary Duff than this. And I should mention, there are two types of Roman pizzas. You have Roman pizza that's built in a pan and it's kind of a little thicker like ours. And then you have a super thin, super crispy round pizza. Roman pizza. All you pizza lovers, if you dug the video, if you're planning on making this pizza, like the video, sub to the Chansky if you're new to the Chan Skizzle. Um, tell your boys, tell your girls, tell your fam, tell your people about the channel if you dig it. That really helps us out. I'm trying to spread the good, good gospel, the good, good, cheesy gosp. Best way to support us is over on the Grocery Fund. Every donation to the Grocery Fund, AKA the Patreon, helps support this channel and everything that we do, from the editing to the pizza buying to the pizza eating, all of the above. If you could help out over there financially, we would appreciate, but if not, that's all good. We're chill. Stick around. Hang out. Come hang in the Discord specifically where we be chatting. If we chatting with you. Yeah, that's all I got. So until next we meet. Ciao. You forgot to feed Guy. The burrata and do you for you. Open up. Oh yeah. Easy, easy. Damn near took my hand. <laughs>